Hello gamers! It's SoftKitty99 and today we're back in House Flipper at the Turtle House which was added for the April update, the free update. And I'm just thinking it might be a nice idea to make a small garden. Now I'm thinking that the theme for this is probably oriental so I think we should have at least one fairly large bonsai tree around and I'm also thinking we want to be practical so if we pop out a picnic table as somewhere to sit and eat and enjoy the view and the sun because we're on a tropical little island and then maybe look for some edible types of plants and then maybe a couple of flowers just to add a little bit of pretty so I don't want a huge garden I just want a tiny one in fact we might want something else to sit on Maybe one of these swings type things, perhaps. I mean, because it's a Kung Fu expert, Master Ugwe, that owned the house, he could put some like exercise equipment and stuff outside for practicing with, but there's not that much space in the garden, so I think we'll stick to something fairly small. Maybe that garden swing there, I wonder if we can change, I bet we can change the colours, can't we? So I think this garden swing as well will probably be the last piece of actual garden furniture that we put in. So let's take a look at some of the colours. And then decide which one we think is the best. Kind of want to keep it in neutral, natural colours again to fit in as much as possible with the environment. Of course the swing doesn't actually look like it really fits but I just think it's nice to have places to sit and enjoy the scenery that we've got. Alright now where's a good place to put this? I do have the day night cycles turned off but on this particular house that doesn't seem to change it because we've got the magic box from the puzzle inside that changes it from day to night so I think this could be a good position for the swing. It's just off to the side of the tree trunk so that it shouldn't hit anything. So let's just assemble this up. Make sure we tighten all the nuts up properly. We don't want it collapsing on people. And then for the inside of the house, I'm thinking because of the supposed association with Master Ugwe, you might want to keep some of the furniture and things as a selling point for the house because of the historic significance of the place so that's kind of the plan so let's turn it back to daylight ta-da magic puzzle daylight so I was thinking a little bed of like edible plants and maybe a few flowers right in front of the house near the door but we don't want to overdo it because like I said we've not got much space So we don't really want hanging plants like that last one, which is why I got rid of it. And I don't want to have too big a plant. But I do want some sort of decorative stuff and then maybe a couple of ribosome edible berry plants. Um, how big is this grass? Yeah, we can have that in the centre as like the centrepiece for our decorative section. And if we look at edibles, I'm thinking maybe the ribosomes. I mean, we could put raspberries, but how do they? Yeah, they're about the same height, aren't they? Yeah, so we'll have a little clutch of raspberries so that we've got some edibles, you see. And then um, what else is there actually in the edibles besides the ribosomes that I know we won't want at least one of those in? Should we go for the black ones? If we put that at the opposite side. Slightly bigger than the raspberries, so they don't quite balance each other out in an aesthetic point of view, but they, they kind of match. Like I said, we wanted that little bit of edible stuff in there. Water them, there we go. Yeah, we don't really need to water the others, but I'm going to anyway. Yeah! <laughs> Let's have a quick look, see if there's anything else. We definitely don't want big trees, we've not got enough space. And I want to keep the palm trees, so. I could maybe put a tomato in, but then it's going to be a lot taller than everything else. But I think once we dig it into the ground, it's not going to be that much taller, is it? 
and it'll just fit in this gap here between the grass and the raspberries. Pop it in the hole, pop the soil down nice, water, ta-da! See, you've got a nice little selection of edibles there. Yep, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So maybe a little bit of pretty stuff now. Ah, this is where all the bonsai stuff is. From the pictures it's kind of hard to tell how big they are, isn't it? Well that's a decent size. Maybe we could put it like on the patio. Which orientation? Oh that one I think. Oh that's very pretty, I like that. And I kind of want one for the opposite side as well, but... Ooh, now the one with the rocks. Is that a lot bigger? I th oh, it must be. 66 pounds. That must be a much bigger one. Let's take a look at the variation. Yeah, let's take... Oh, look at that. That is absolutely phenomenal. Not quite sure where it would fit, though. Maybe we want something a little bit smaller. What's this one look like? Ooh, red. Oh, that's tall. That could go at the side here, couldn't it? Oh, that looks really nice. Oh, there you go. So we've got our bonsai tree homage to the oriental theme here. No, I think we'd like a couple of florally... Are these bushes and things are going to be too big. Let's go floral. Um, not sure what I want to use. Just want to kind of put a little light border around where we've got the edibles, just in front of the house. So we don't want anything really big. big is the Veronica? Oh, it's too big, isn't it? That's too big. Ah, the salvia's smaller, isn't it? Still rather bushy, isn't it? Might still be... It's the right height, but it's too big around there, then. Husters are always good for a low ground cover. You see, they're a nice size in circumference and height to not overpower. We could put a couple of these in. Add some nice colours. So they've got the gold at one side and the um, silver at the other. So you can tell that I'm looking for something that's shorter. Mm, tiny bit smaller than I was hoping for, but... Uh, similar sort of style of leaf structure to the hostas. So we'll put a couple of these plantain lilies in at the front here. Turn it back to daylight, please, magic box. There we go. And then we'll see what else we can find. So I don't really want the bed to come any further forward. And I think I'm going to still leave it as a grass base rather than laying down a, a different sort of sand or gravel or something underneath them. Though you might like to do that if you want to, to build a slightly bigger, more um, structured bed. Well, we're going for kind of a free-flowing, oh, got this plant, added it in. Eucharist. There's some really fantastical colours in these. Oh yeah, maybe that round the edge there. So we've got this low ground cover so that you've still got a clear and easy view of the stuff at the back. So we put one at each side here. I think that's that's looking really good there. We might want to add a couple of small things in there, but I think we're pretty much finished with this bed now. Just want to make sure it looks nice and neat and we've got everything we want in. A couple of flowers maybe. How big are these little bugle lilies? I think they're quite small. Oh no, they're not. They're huge. That's not going to fit, is it? Mm. 
maybe one at the end but then it, it kind of destroys the sort of semicircle structure I've gone for so but it's a very pretty plant we should use that somewhere else oh look little, little tiny flowers yeah it's had a couple of little tiny flowers like that I mean you can barely see them but I just I just like the idea of them uh, where's that one gonna go where should we put you right in the middle there like that have a look see if anything else takes our fancy yeah we're doing the whole thing a little bit haphazardly aren't we as we go along so just want to compare them there you see yeah uh, yeah I think we were, maybe we're done there not sure let's have a quick look what else there is didn't plan any of this out as you can tell just going free flow see what we come up with just wanted to play around with the new house and have a bit of fun. Yay! Thought I'd bring you along for the ride. Fern maybe in this corner to fill in the space. Will that fit? Oh, it won't let me dig it. Can we move it for the foot? No, it's not happy with it there now, is it? Oh, well the fern seems like a good idea. Will you let me put me put you in? No, nope. it's going to let me place it in two different places, look, but it's not going to let me dig it into the ground. That's kind of weird. If it wasn't going to let you put it in the ground, then it shouldn't really allow you to put it down at all. Hmm. Right, so we've managed to have it in three different positions, but it won't let me dig the hole to plant it. Very strange. How about we put it at the opposite side? Okay, it's going to let me do it there. That's kind of weird, that, because normally if you can't fit them, it just doesn't let you place them at all. Water. Oh, no, we need to bed it in first. There we're water. Nice, I like that. So let's take a look from further back to see what the whole effect is. So now it's quite, kind of a little welcoming, come here, see how I've added my little bit of a garden. Come into the house, isn't it beautiful? And like I said, because it's the Ugwe reference from Kung Fu Panda, I um, kind of feel like we should keep a lot of the furniture that's in here for the historic value, sort of. I think we're probably not going to do too much to the interior upstairs, apart from tidy up and maybe refresh some of the paintwork, add curtains and blinds and things. I think we're probably going to go with blinds. Because I just don't think curtains fit in with the type of furnishings and things that we've got here. So if we put all the blinds up in the kitchen area first, I'm just going to use the traditional blinds for the kitchen. So we need to put in three of them, so that's one done. Let's get the second one in. And the final one. Wow, it's going dark again. It's going to day-night cycles very fast in this game, aren't they? Daylight! Right, so I think what we need to do is move this coffee jar just across a little bit, just so that it looks neater. It's a little bit difficult to get everything at exact positionings, but I think that looks much neater. We already moved the bar stools closer, so that looks good. I'm just checking the quality of the furniture. I don't think anything looks bad, so I think we can keep the furniture that we've got for the historic value from Uruguay again. I keep saying that, I need to stop saying that. <laughs> now for this big closet area I think what we should do is turn it into a small separate room and maybe make it into an office I mean it's not a huge room but I think it would be big enough for a little office so what we need to do is knock some of this lintel down and turn it into full height wall so that we can add a um, door so one two three wide doors so those are the noon sort of narrow doors one two three and then we want to knock the rest down and then fill that in with full height make 
sure all the bits disappear. Don't know why I walked into that then. For some reason I just thought I'd be able to pick it up. The brain does strange things sometimes, doesn't it? Right, so we need to put in a little bit of full heart wall and then uh, put in a door. Is that right? I think that's right. Right, so now, door. Uh, which doors? Yeah, they are the narrow doors, aren't they? Yeah. Narrow doors. So some of these new narrow doors. That's kind of a nice oriental door, isn't it? I've made that gap too big, haven't I? Let's grab one of these doors, make it all white and just check the size of the door gap that I've put in. See if I've done it right. I think I might have made it too wide. A traditional door size, not these uh, fancy little narrow doors. All white. Let's just check the size. Yeah, I have made it one too wide. After I counted it as well. <gasps> oh, giddy, what a silly girl. Right, so we need to knock that one back down again. Luckily, it's not a huge amount of money that we've just wasted. <laughs> right, there we go. Fill it in. Make sure it's in the right place. Beautiful. No, turn that off. We don't want any more lintel, please. <laughs> no more wall, please. Right, um. There we go. White doors. So it's a very small space, but I do think that we can turn it into a tiny office. I think one of those type, types of corner desks might fit. And if not, there's some tiny, tiny desks that probably would fit. So I think that's what we'll try and do with it. See how it works out. I'll do the experiments and you can see if it works or not for when you're doing it yourself. That's an awfully long amount of furniture these days, isn't it? That's really nice to see. There's got to be an easier way to find what I'm looking for, hasn't there? Um, office. Maybe it's under here? Ah, oh, yeah, desks and things are all in here. Look, that's much better. And all the de office chairs and things. See, so some of these little tiny ones will definitely fit, but I think they might be too little. Yeah, see, that's just dwarfed. But see the space there, it makes it look dwarfed. That's, that's a tiny desk, and there's plenty of space for that. I think it looks too small, so maybe the corner desks, one of these, one might fit. Is that just the two? Okay, let's try one and then see if this works, and if it doesn't, we'll try the other one and see which one we think's best. So that would fit doesn't look perfect in the space that we've got but it would work if I could get it in the right spot we're never going to get something that's perfect are we I think that might work quite well actually yeah I think that's going to work nicely so we want to sw well, let's have a swivel chair and let's make it white again and uh, rotate there we go yeah, do you know what? I think that that's going to work really well in this space. I mean, I know we've not got a ton of space, but sometimes you really need an office space so you can get away from everybody else. And even if it's a tiny space, it's better to have a separate room than to be in with everybody else. So if we put a whiteboard on the wall, and then we'll either want some sort of file cabinet or maybe a bookcase or something, and I think that might be all we put furniture wise in this space because it's tiny and we do have a window in here which is a, a great advantage if there hadn't have been a window it would have had to be a closet space again I think 
but that window gives us the more options so we can turn it into something else that like the office. We could also probably knock the wall out and make it a bigger open plan living room area. But I just like the idea of trying to make a tiny office space in here. So we definitely want a bookcase, but because we've got the window... Ooh, this is the mild bookcase. This is the one that was out in the living room, wasn't it, to make the countertop in the um, kitchen? So maybe we use that again so that it matches what we've already got in the house. And it will actually fit quite nicely underneath the space where the window is, won't it? Yes, I like that. And I think we'll go for another blind again in here on this window. That way you can control the amount of light you've got coming into your satisfaction. And we could use one of the um, different blinds, blinds, but I think we're just going to go for a traditional style of blind again. We'll probably keep that style throughout the house, to be honest. I just fit, think it fits nicely into the theme of the place. I, we'll definitely have to paint the walls in there, but let's let's turn it back to daylight again. So it's sort of a very pale bluish colour on the walls. But because we've added extra piece of wall to it, that's now white. And I don't think that we have a colour that exactly matches the one that we've got in here. So we'll have to change that. But I do think we might put up a couple of paintings. And I think we're going to go with the blue theme. Both because we've got a bit of blue on the wall here. And because we've got all that blue ocean and blue sky outside. So let's make... Um, a yellow as well, so we've got the sand and the sea. There we go. Lovely. I just feel that those are very relaxing sort of pictures, so that's why I'm using them quite a lot. I think I might leave the ceiling lights in for the living room, but I think we'll change the bathroom and the office space lighting. So we want... Uh, where's lights? There's lights. There's lights. Lights is under furniture. And we want ceiling lamps. Let's see what we can pick. So the circular ceiling lamp, I think, in white will be good for the bathroom. And for the office... Let's have a look what else there is. What does this lotus thing look like? Oh, it's too big. Too big for this particular room. But you know what? We're going to go with the circular lamp again. I think maybe because of the size of the space. But let's just have a look if there's anything else first. Mm. No, I don't think there is. I think we're going to go for the circular lamp again. Just because of the size of the space, a lot of the lighting just isn't going to look right. Right, do we have a light switch? No, we don't have a light switch in here. Light switches installations, yes, light installations, light switches. And I think it's the very standard one throughout the rest of the house, so let's just pop one of those in here next to the door. Yeah, so now we need some paint for the walls. So I think we're looking for a very pale blue, see if we can match it though I don't actually remember the exact shade from looking through before. No, do you know what? What's on the walls I don't think actually matches anything that we've actually got in the selection. Interesting. But because I've changed the wall I definitely have to paint. Otherwise we're going to have this big white canvas area where we put in new walling and that also means we're going to have to repaint the living room I think as well so I think this is the closest colour 
So let's just see if the sky blue, yeah, so that's a lot brighter than what we originally had. So let's paint one wall and then decide if we're just going to go for the accent colour on this side or if we're going to paint all of it. Do you know, I think I prefer the more definite colour, so we're going to paint the whole room with the sky blue, I think. Just so we've got that nice bright colour. I know a lot of people don't like bright colours, but I really, really, really like them, to be honest. I just like bright colours, they make me cheerful. So we're going to make this a cheerful room. And considering it's tiny, you do want it to be quite a light colour, but you also want it to be a cheerful colour. I feel like I'm having to redo the roller, paint roller very often now. There we go. And oh, and again. Oh, is it, is it empty? It's empty. Oh, well, we're so close to finishing. We're going to have to buy another pot, aren't we? And it's going dark again. Let's buy another one. I figured that a small pot would actually going to be enough for this room because I thought the room was stinky. But the room's obviously a little bit bigger. And then I got the impression of. Right, so let's make sure we've painted everything around the windows. Right. Oh, under, under the window. Missed that as well. There we go. So I think that's all done. Lovely. Now let's move the pot of paint over here, just in case we decide to use it again later. Now we've got pale pink walls in the living room. Let's see if we can match it. How about pale pink? That looks fairly close from looking at the paint pot. So if we do this on the... now it's brighter again. Pretty similar colours but just a little bit brighter. A more definite pink. And the outside of the house is pink as well, so I think maybe pink was Master Uguay's favourite colour, according to these people. Right, so let, let's paint around everything while we're here. Let's make it all the same colour. And they didn't do the inside of the windows, so I will, because I, I don't like them being a different colour. Let me know down below if that's a personal thing. or Do you like the insides of the windows being different colours, or do you like me insist on painting all of it? interested is whether that's just a me thing or not. <laughs> right, so nice bright pink walls. So we'll go slowly around the rest of the room. And like I said, I think we'll keep the furniture that we've got in here. There's nothing looks like it needs to be replaced and I really like this little seating area that they've done in the centre here. With these like futon chairs. I don't know what they're called properly but they're kind of like little futon chairs. I like that. I think it's really cute. They haven't painted by the door either. We could paint the um, kitchen area in a different colour as well. Or we could keep the pink going, I don't know. Oh, let's paint in this gap of the doorway as well. We'll have to close the door to get to that last piece there. There we go, beautiful. Right, so do we do the kitchen in a different colour? Or do we keep it all pink? Hmm. So let's paint the inside of this window frame just because it'll annoy me if I don't. And then we'll oh, refill and then we'll go across this end wall and see how far we can get with the pink to be honest. Then if I run out of pink paint I might try using what we used in the office for just like the kitchen area just to see if it looks better to have two colours or if I want to keep it all just one. Ah oh, we run out of paint again. 
What do we do? Do we make it two different colours or do we just stick to the one colour? I, you know, let's try a different colour just to see if um, segmenting the place makes it look okay or if it looks odd. Experimenting is the key to these things, isn't it? To figure out which you prefer and what looks nice. More paint. As far as there. Oh, and we're out of paint again. Ah, that's an empty. That one's empty. Let's get rid of the empty pots. Turn it back to daylight. Oh, yeah, turn it back to daylight, and then. Uh, so now we've got enough paint to be able to see. Now, what do we want to do? Do we want to buy more pink, or do we want to buy more blue? I think I'm going to go for pink and turn it all into pink. Right, so the first thing to do is see if we missed any where we were painting before. And then paint across this end wall. A little bit more paint and then go across the end wall here. So I think we've got all of that. Let's just double check. Yeah, I think that's all done. And then we'll repaint over here. So it was a nice experiment, but the colours just didn't look right together. I think I prefer it all to be uniform, so that's what we're going to do. And it didn't cost us any extra because we'd kept the paint from the other room, so we could do the experiment without costing us more money. There we go. Though I suppose we could have got a little bit back from selling the paint, but yeah, it was nice to try the experiment. There we go. So let's go across here and see beautiful now it's all our beautiful shade of pink so let's just check that we haven't missed any little bits lovely so we have sold some dead plants so we don't have any plants in the room and we don't have any artwork on the walls so for our theme we've got pink we've got oriental and we've got the sea and the beach so with all of these new beautiful paintings that we've got to choose from we should be able to find something that matches one of those themes or maybe multiple ones so maybe a fishy picture how big is that it's quite an expensive picture that's quite big actually isn't it really want something for here but that's much too big so what else is oh that cherry is nice um and there's a few sort of pinky themed, and there's a few watery themed. And then we're back to all the traditional ones that we've had for quite a long time. The artwork again is pretty much a personal choice thing, isn't it? There's another fish one, a medium. Well, that's beautiful, I like that. And then we could use something over this side, perhaps. So which theme shall we go for over here? Do we have multiple themes or should we just stick to one? Sunset over the water, maybe? That would be nice. Right, so if we rotate that and pop that near the door. That fits beautifully actually on that wall, doesn't it? That looks rather blank here though. So I think one more painting over there on that piece of wall. the more choice you've got the harder it is to pick one cherry blossom saw that earlier didn't we now which size is going to fit the gap though Let's start with medium possibly a little bit too big so let's try small oh yeah that's much nicer oh that's lovely oh i like that i really like that
So I think we're pretty much done. Let's get rid of the paint. So I'll give you a quick look at the rooms that we've done today. Don't want to over clutter everything. Hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. From Soft Kitty 99, goodbye and happy games!